Welcome to Duality Gamecast, sponsored by Gladiator Games. Today's episode, King of Tokyo. Welcome to Duality Gamecast. I'm Matt. And I'm William. Today is a quick hits episode where we take a look at King of Tokyo. William, how does this game work? Uh, pretty simple. Uh, the goal is to be the last Giga Monster alive, or to reach 20 victory points before any other player. It uses a basic Yahtzee mechanic. You're going to have six dice. You're going to roll them. Keep however many you want, roll them again. Keep however many you want again, roll them one more time. Then you simply do whatever the dice say. Um, there's a one, a two, and a three on each of the dice. If you get three of the same number, you get that many victory points. If you get a heart, you heal that many hit points, equal to how many hearts you have, as long as you're not in Tokyo. If you get a little lightning bolt symbol, you get to collect energy cubes, which are kind of like a currency or money in the game. And if you get the little claw, paw, handprints, that allows you to punch other monsters. If you're in Tokyo, you punch all the monsters outside of Tokyo. If you're outside of Tokyo, you punch the monster in Tokyo. And that monster has a choice to either retreat or hold fast. If they retreat, you're forced into Tokyo. Or if no one's in there and you roll a claw, you have to move into Tokyo. In your turn, you use energy to buy power cards, to give you cool bonuses like fly, shape changing, shrink rays, all sorts of stuff. Uh, again, you're playing until 20 victory points, or you're the only monster standing. Matt, what do you think about the art and components? I really like the art. It's a very lighthearted kind of kaiju game. Um, the power cards um, have a lot of different kind of art styles, and a lot of it has a lot of humor in it. Mm -hmm. You'll see your monsters that you play with doing silly things in some of the cards, or you see other monsters that aren't even, you know, playable characters in the game doing weird stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of humor. Um, it's all well-made art. Um, like the dice, there's another group of these dice. I think they came with the Halloween set. Yeah, I think so. They're like orange engraved. Yeah. They're nice. Um, the little energy cubes are cool. Um, your little standees are nice because they're actually cut out, so they feel more like a miniature kind of thing. Um, you have this little tiny laminated board, which works perfectly because the game's so simple you don't need anything. You're either, and you're either on it or you're not. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of cool because this is a pretty portable game as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's well made. Your uh, characters have a dial card with uh, life and stars or victory points, which is also really solid. So overall, art components, real solid. How would you rate this game? Uh, I'm going to go with a love it. Uh, it definitely raised up with the expansions because there was an expansion that added power cards for each individual monster. So they can actually kind of level up and do their own distinct things. So I think that took it to the next level. Uh, I'm not going to give it a must-buy because I know that I've ran into a few things where I get a little particular about the rules. Some of the cards, you're going to have to look on forums to figure out what they do just because the wording isn't quite clear on them. So you you'll might buy a power card that says, like, do two damage or do damage to a, a neighbor. You're like, okay, how does that card work? And then you'll you read it has like a little shorthand and it says, when you attack a monster that's your neighbor, add this to the attack. If you don't do an attack, it doesn't count as damage. So it's worded oddly, and even when I read the shorthand explanation of it, I still was like, what? So then we had to look on forums on on Morgan Geek to figure it out. We eventually got it, but that type of thing, and it, you see this big stack of cards, you're gonna be you're not going to run to that very often, but it's, it's, it's that thing where this game is so fun and so lighthearted, and you're just like, yay, Chuck and Dice, and you guys are kind of goofing around. Then all of a sudden, the rules, like, monger me is like, wait a minute, what does this card mean? And it, it, for me, it, brought, it brings like, the whole game to a to stop. Of course, once you figure it out, you can go forward with it. It's not a big deal. Um, but love it. I enjoy it a lot. Matt? I'm going to love it as well. Um, I would almost call this a must-buy, so to love it with an asterisk, right? Uh, there is a new version or uh, there's a new kid in town it's called, <laughs> yeah called king of new york which uh i think adds more a little more complexity to it and it puts a little more emphasis on player versus player um so what i would say is if you enjoy a good dice checking game or a good kaiju game or are you looking for a really good light hearted filler type game maybe um one of the two is probably a must-buy. But yeah, definitely in love it with this one. Got to play with the expansions, so Me really too. prefer it with the expansions. Thank you, guys.
Thank you. Hey guys, I don't know what your favorite big movie monster is, or your favorite big movie with a monster in it. Let me know in the comments below, and thanks to all these people for helping me out, and click on me to subscribe. Welcome to CNN. Alright, so bah, bah, how do we play this game? You bah, I don't know. Okay. And then that made perfect sense. And then, yeah.